A finger like coronal hole rotates into the Earth's strike zone. It could be sending us some fast wind. And noctilucent clouds are creeping ever closer to the equator. What does this mean for you? Those stories and more in the news this week. This forecast, sponsored in part by Eric Johansson. Check him out at Instagram.com slash Scoobist. Space weather this week continues to be a bit interesting. As we switch to our front side sun, you can see those bright regions, and then there's a finger-like coronal hole just to the east of them. Now that region is rotating into the Earth strike zone now, and it's going to be sending us some fast solar wind over the next couple days. This could bump us up to storm levels, especially at high latitudes, and could bring a little bit of aurora over the next couple days, maybe down to mid-latitudes, but it won't last very long before things kind of retreat back north. And then after that, we're pretty much looking at unsettled conditions. Now, also back to those bright regions, they are going to be rotating off of the sun's west limb here in the next few days, and that means solar flux is going to tank for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. As we switch to our backside sun, you can see those regions leaving stereo's uh, west limb view, and you can see there's absolutely nothing behind them. So unfortunately, when the solar flux tanks, we're going to hit low radio propagation on Earth's day side, and the look from stereo tells us that these conditions will continue easily over the next two weeks. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the full moon phase, with the full moon being on the 17th. So you night sky watchers, if you're looking for dim objects in the sky, the full moon will definitely be a distraction. So be sure to check your local rise and set times. Have you checked your nighttime skies lately? You might see some unusually bright cloud formations that seem to glow with an eerie light. These are called noctilucent clouds. Now, they used to be a rare occurrence visible only at high latitudes near the North and South Poles, but they are becoming a much more common sight at mid-latitudes. Originally thought to be associated only with meteor dust, more and more scientists are beginning to believe that these beautiful opalescent clouds may actually be a sign of our deep solar minimum. This is a time when cosmic ray penetration from interstellar space is at its peak. This increased cosmic ray flux is actually helping to form noctilucent clouds far brighter and far closer to the equator than we've ever seen before. In fact, over this last week, these clouds have been seen in the night skies over Germany and France, and also as far south as Oklahoma, Utah, and even central California in the United States. But be sure to catch these stunning clouds over the summer because once the new solar cycle kicks in, they will likely retreat back to their home at high latitudes. Until then, enjoy the show and the knowledge that you don't have to wait for a solar storm or for aurora to catch a glimpse of space weather in action. Right now, it may be gracing the nighttime skies right over your own backyard. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that fast wind from that finger-like coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone, but we're not expecting a hit to last very long. Now, at high latitudes, NOAA's expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 50% chance of a major storm. But again, these conditions won't last very long. It's just kind of like the little slap in the face that we get with Earth when we get hit by some fast wind, and then things will settle down quite quickly. At mid-latitudes, we're also expecting unsettled conditions with about a 20% chance of a minor storm. And again, as we roll in through the weekend, things should settle down quite quickly, especially at mid-latitudes, and then remain pretty much at unsettled conditions as we enter the new week. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we are saying goodbye to the only bright regions on the sun right now when they are disappearing over the sun's west limb and onto the sun's backside. This means we do have a spotless sun and no risk for radio blackouts. As a matter of fact, everything is in the green when it comes to big flares, so GPS users on Earth's day side, you should be very happy. But this also means with this spotless sun that we have very little solar flux. In in fact, the solar flux is going to disappear back into the high 60s right around the beginning of next week. So this means we're back into poor conditions for radio propagation once again, and it looks like these conditions will easily continue over the next week and possibly two weeks before we get a reprieve. Now also, because we are at solar minimum, we do have a higher cosmic ray penetration than we normally would have. So this means uh, the frequent flyers, and this does include air crew, who fly over 800 hours annually 
annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the marginal range for radiation dose. And this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week continues to keep us on our toes. We have a finger-like coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone, and it could be sending us a small pocket of fast wind that could bump us up to storm levels, at least at high latitudes, for a little while. So Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you might get a good chance for a show. Now mid-latitude photographers, well, you're going to have to stay really on your toes and be willing to kind of chase Aurora and watch your skies very closely because it's not going to last for very long. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, the story isn't so great for you because we are losing those bright regions. They're rotating to the sun's backside, so expect the solar flux to tank here into early next week, and those conditions will continue easily over the next couple weeks. So you're going to have to rely on things like sporadic E to kind of keep that propagation boosted a little bit for you until we get some more sunspots on the sun. Now, GPS users, well, things are looking pretty good for you. We don't have any strong solar storms, and the solar flux is pretty low, so your GPS reception pretty much all over the globe should look pretty nice. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.